forget no, not all his benefits, who forgiven all thy iniquities, who healed all thy diseases, who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always shine, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dwelt with us after our sins nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. But I thank God for the reading of his word this morning and for his goodness and his mercy that he has bestowed unto each and every one of us. At this time to bless our heart with a special gift to welcome Sister Ivo. So let us welcome him.
shows in the outside, you know, our ways and things and change. And we thank God for that greatest miracle ever, that gift of salvation, of making that old man into a new man. Let us all stand. We just want to give God some praise and on a couple choruses. When the Spirit of the Lord descends on me, I will dance like David now. Oh, 
glad that you have chosen to worship with us uh, today. And uh, we bless the Lord for bringing us through another week. Uh, we have been uh, listening a lot to the song One Day at a Time with Jesus. Praise God. And so I think that that is something that we ought to take heed of. Just living one day, one more one at a time. Praise the Lord. We are living in, in the days of the coming of the Son of Man who will belong before the Lord made his return. And so we to make sure that we are clothed and we are ready for when he comes. It might come anytime during the morning, during the afternoon time, uh, during the night uh, while we are sleeping. Or we just Make sure that we are ready. Amen, somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome the newcomers among us today. And for those who are viewing the newcomers as well, God bless you. God bless you as you're viewing uh, Power Science uh, Ministries uh, Sunday morning uh, worship service. We want to welcome two of Sister Carol's and Vijay's grandchildren, Romeo and Angelica. Would you guys please stand uh, with them up your hands? Last Sunday we had our kickoff of the Sunday school and it was a blast. Had great, great reports about the Sunday school. And so I know that um, the kids are anxious to get to their classes momentarily. But we just want to have a, a make some announcements. And um, that is on, well, tonight, it's a very special night. We are having a movie. Praise the Lord. And so there is a of the of the movie that is going to be here tonight. So. Recently, and we are so glad that uh, they are 
willing and have decided that they want to make their faith public in the Lord. Uh, so be here to support to support them. There's a change uh, with our uh, youth meeting from um, Friday. It's going to be on Thursday, all right? So all the young people attending youth meeting this week uh, from Friday uh, to, th uh, to Thursday. On Tuesday, I'll be choir practice as well. So all choir members, it's Tuesday, 7 o'clock right here. It is choir practice. So we have a full week ahead of us, and we are really excited and thrilled uh, about it. Uh, praise the Lord. Well, here's a little humor with the offering bearers. Would you come as we give uh, uh, today's collection? So there was a woman whose husband often came home drunk. And so she decided that she had to do something about it. So she wanted a cure, a cure for this habit of her husband being a, a drunk. And so one Halloween night, she decided to put on a devil's uh, costume. And so she suited up uh, with uh, that costume and hid behind a tree to intercept her husband on the way home. So when her husband came by, she jumped out and stood before him with red horns, long tail and a pitch fork. And so he asked, who are you? And so she responded, well, I am the devil. Well, he said, you better come home with me because I'm married to your sister. <laughs>
message and then uh, for the prayer line. We're doing it on my own for today's message as we continue on the subject, the God of the impossible. What a powerful word we have been receiving, the God of the impossible. Luke chapter 1 and verses 37. Luke chapter 1 verses 37 from the King James Version. We are going to read God's word together. Are we all ready now folks? Let's read. It's on the screen. For with God nothing shall be impossible. One more time. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Praise God. Only believe all things are possible as we sing just before we begin today's message. Praise God. Only believe. Only Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Well, we stop out at the book of Second Kings, um, and we were looking at chapter six, and we were looking at chapter seven, as we have been uh, looking at the God of the impossibilities of how He worked mightily through the Old Testament, how He is moving through the New Testament, and how He is moving uh, today. And so we read uh, about uh, King Benedad, the king of Syria. He gathered his army and he besieged Samaria. As a result, a famine struck the city until a donkey's head was sold for 80 pieces uh, of silver, equivalent uh, to 80 days of labor. And a fourth part of the dove's dung uh, was sold for five days of labor. Things were so bad that mothers were eating their babies in order to survive. And so in the midst of all this chaos, in the midst of this pandemonium, in the midst of this helpless situation, a time of great despair that have come upon the nation. How, folks, did the, the man of God, Elisha, how did he face uh, this situation? Well, folks, uh, I want to, to read to you verses uh, 32 uh, of 2 Kings uh, chapter 6. Uh, the Bible tells us, uh, but Elisha, underline that, folks, uh, but Elisha sat in his house. Um, the king of Samaria decided uh, that he was going to kill Elisha. Because uh, he spared the Syrians uh, and he said, uh, feed them, give them uh, something to drink. Uh, and so they did that. Uh, and the Bible tells us now they had returned. Syria had returned uh, and now besieging uh, Samaria until this terrible famine. And so the king uh, of Samaria decided, uh, listen, that Elisha is to be blamed because when we had the opportunity to kill them and wipe them out our enemies, he said, no, feed them. But this is what the Bible tells us, folks. If your enemy is hungry, give him something to eat. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. Praise God. We ought not to take matters in our own hands. The Bible tells us, vengeance is mine, save the Lord. We ought to do good, praise the Lord. Even to those that do not like us, even to those that may not approve of us, we got to do them good, praise the Lord. As much as is in your power, the Bible says, to do good to all men, but especially to those who are of the faith. Elisha did what God wanted him to to do. Elisha did what God would do, praise God, feeding his enemies. And so the king of Samaria said that Elisha now is to be blamed for the situation that we are facing. So he sent a messenger. He sent a messenger to kill him. Elisha knowing what was happening. Instead, folks, of running, instead of hiding, instead of being Fearful for his life. Elisha remained in his house unmoved. Praise God. Hallelujah. You see, Elisha had a confidence in God. He knew the God, amen, that was with him all these years and all this time of difficulty and hardship. He knew that this God was with him, standing by his side. He knew no weapon that is formed against him, it is going to prosper. Praise God. He knew that God was his protector. He knew that God was his shield. He knew that God was watching over him. He knew that no harm could come to him. Praise the Lord. Because God was on his side. He knew greater was the Lord who was with him than all the armies of Syria and even the king of Israel. They could do him no hurt. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because why? Because God was with him. The God of the impossible was his shield and his buckler and his proof. Praise God. So the man was confident. Praise 
praise the Lord. Uh, he sat in his house, folks. Uh, he could have gotten on a horse uh, and he could say, let me get out of this place uh, because the king uh, is going to kill me. But he was not fearful, praise God. Uh, he will not give the devil an opportunity to mock him uh, and to laugh at him uh, and say, look, you are a man of God uh, and you are running from your enemies. Uh, you are turning your back uh, upon your enemies. Uh, what kind of man of God are you? Folks, no. Elisha said, listen, um, that I am not running and I am not hiding. It is just like Nehemiah, praise God, uh, when he was building up uh, the walls of Jerusalem. Uh, the enemy sent uh, messages uh, after messages uh, about uh, calling him out uh, and plotting uh, to destroy him, to frustrate the work of the Lord. Uh, but praise God, uh, he was unmoved. Glory to God. Uh, he continued to build. Uh, he continued to work uh, with a sword in one hand, uh, with a shovel, a trowel on the other hand. Uh, the men worked on the wall uh, and it prospered and was success. What God is saying to us this morning, do not be afraid. Hallelujah, church. Uh, do not not be afraid of continue to work and continue to worship. Could you give the Lord praise this morning? Hallelujah. And God will prosper us. Continue your work. Continue your worship. Folks, do not be afraid and do not be afraid. Our lives are in the hands of the Lord. And the devil cannot touch us until the Lord gave him possession. A permission to do so. Praise God. Hallelujah. No sickness can come on you unless the Lord give permission. No disease can come on you unless the Lord give permission. Praise God. We are going to work and we are going to worship until Jesus Christ comes. Praise the Lord. We are not running. We are not turning our backs upon the enemy folks. We are going to continue very humbly to build the kingdom of the Lord. Can I Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So he sat, but the Bible says he spot, he sat in his house with the elders with him. Praise God. The man, I tell you, was so confident. Hallelujah. That God will take care of him. And so, folks, while he was talking with the elders, uh, the messenger came uh, and he said to them, uh, he said, look what the king uh, has done. He has sent uh, uh, someone here to kill me. He has sent someone uh, to take my life um, because, uh, the, because of what uh, was, was happening. Uh, and so the Bible tells us uh, that Elisha looked and surveyed the situation uh, and he met the situation, folks, uh, with a word from God. In verse 1 of chapter 7, then Elisha says, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. How did he meet, folks, uh, this challenge? How did he meet uh, this predicament? Yeah. He met it uh, with the word of God. Elisha took up the sword of the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. And he lifted up and he declared uh, the word of the Lord. Uh, even in this time that was so difficult most, uh, to declare the word, he still declared the word. Do not be afraid to declare the word of the Lord. Uh, that's why Paul said to Timothy, preach it in season, son. Uh, Preach it in the season and preach it out of the season. But you preach the word of the Lord. Praise God. Folks, you must not let the circumstances dictate your faith in God. You must not let what is happening on the outside determine your faith in God. You must not let the troubles on the outside determine your faith in God. You must not let the economy determine your faith in God. You must not be Determining what the news is saying, determining your faith, what the television is saying, what the media is saying, what the newspaper is saying, what the government is saying, glory to God, to take your faith in God. Hallelujah. Folks, what do you do in a time like this? The Bible tells us that Elijah simply stood in confidence and he said, Listen. Hear what the Lord is saying. 
You have been hearing what man is saying too long. You have been hearing what others are saying too long. People are saying that we are done. We are wiped out. This is the last. But hear what God is saying. Praise the Lord. It's time, folks, that you listen to what God is saying. The circumstances have been speaking to you. And the circumstances have been causing you to become uneasy. It has been causing you to become uh, in despair. It has been causing you to become fearful. But here this morning, what God is saying, praise God. Folks, there are a lot of voices that you'll be hearing coming from this direction and that direction all around you. But there's a time that you must shut your ears to what others are saying and what your problems are saying and what your mountains are saying and start listening to what God is saying. God is saying that I am the God of the impossible. Praise God. That is what God is saying. Give him praise, Allah. Glory to God. So he said, listen, hear the word of the Lord God. Hear what God is saying. The king is talking about a famine. Everybody is talking about a famine. But hear what God is saying. God has a different plan. God has a different purpose. Everybody is looking on the poverty. Everybody is looking here. How the, the barrenness of the land. Everybody is looking at the trouble that they are in. But hear the word of the Lord. Praise God. The word is able to change, folks. The word is able to bring about the change that you need this morning in your life and in your situation. Praise God. The word can bring the change. The word can bring the yoke. The word can bring the bondage. The word the word can break the sickness. The word can break the diseases. It can break the infirmities. It can break the poverty. Praise God. It can break the depression. It can break the anxiety. Praise God. The word has the power to break. The Bible tells us. Glory to God. So yeah, the word of the Lord, Elisha said. Praise God. Folks, that's what we need today. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to hear from God. Amen. We need a word from God. Hallelujah. What is God saying right now? What is God saying to you, my brother and sister? What is God saying uh, to our nation? What is God saying to the nations of the world today? What is God is saying to the governments? What is God saying to the kings? What is God saying to the queens? What is God saying to the economists today? What is God saying to planet Earth? Folks, we need a word from the living God. Hallelujah. What is God saying today? What is God saying about tomorrow? What is God saying about the future? We need a word from the God, from the Lord. Hallelujah, folks. When you have a word from God, you will be like Elijah. You will stand firm in the midst of your crisis, in the midst of your calamity. As long as you have a word from God, you're not going to be moved. You're not going to be shaken, praise God. When you have a word from God, you can stand in confidence and you can face the battles, praise the Lord, because you know you have a word from God, a solid word from God. Praise the Lord. There are a lot of people, folks, that are looking for a word. When you're looking for a word from the psychic, you're going to be disappointed. Listen to me, folks. Uh, they only false prophets. Uh, I want to tell you that. Uh, yes, uh, they only deceive us, folks. Uh, let me tell you something. They can't even help themselves. Uh, if they were really true, you think, folks, that they would have been in that situation they're there today. Folks, uh, let me tell you something. If they truly know what it was about, uh, they would have been high. Hello, somebody. He can hide on the hog. Uh, not, not where they are, folks. Uh, but it's a deception, uh, folks. Uh, I want to tell you, do not, the Bible says, do not put your trust and your confidence in man. Do not put your trust and your confidence in man's word. Uh, it will fail. It will change, folks. Uh, you're going to be badly disappointed. But put your faith and trust in the living God. Uh, 
put your faith and trust in this book, uh, the 66 books of the Bible, praise God. It is God's word uh, to us, praise the Bible says uh, in Matthew uh, 25, 35, heaven and earth shall pass, uh, but God's word shall not pass, praise the Lord. Uh, the devil has sought to destroy this book, uh, but folks, uh, the word of God still is here with us uh, today, praise God. Still the number one book in the entire world. Glory to God in every language. It has been translated. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Still changing the lives of men and of women. If you're looking for a word, I give you the Bible this morning. If you're looking for a word, I give you the 66 books of the Bible this morning. I give you a sure word today. Amen. Not the word of a psychic folks. Not the word of a pundit. But I'm giving you the word of the living God. Hallelujah. This word will save you. This word will deliver you. This word will bring you out of that pit. This word will bring you out from that trap this morning. This word. Stand on the word. Believe the word. Operate the word. Live in the word. And victory is yours. Give him praise. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's why the man was confident. Because why? He got a word from God. A sure word, folks. A positive word. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And hear what he said. He said to them, he said, listen. Thus saith the Lord. Praise God. Tomorrow, about this time, Shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gates of Samaria? In other words, uh, the poverty will end tomorrow. The crisis will end tomorrow. The famine will end tomorrow. The salvation will end tomorrow because God is sending a miracle. Give the Lord praise, Allah. Hallelujah. God is sending deliverance. Thank you, Jesus. God seen your suffering. God seen your trouble. But help is on the way. Praise the Lord. God sees what you are going through. But God has a plan. Hallelujah. He's coming. Praise the name of Jesus. He's coming to supply your every need, my brother and your, your sister. Do not be afraid. Do not be troubled. What you're going to eat, what you're going to put on. Hallelujah. Because God will take care of you. Praise the name of Jesus. He promised to supply your every need. Hallelujah. God seen your struggles. He seen the hardship that you're going. And God is saying, Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I'm coming to you. I have not forgotten you. Praise you. I've been thinking, God has forgotten me. God has left, left me, but most God has not forget, forgotten you. God has allowed you to go through the testing and the trial to see whether you are going to stand with him, to see if you're going to stand by him, to see if you're going to stand for him. That's why the trial has come, folks. That's why the testing has come. Praise God, so that you would be a better person, a stronger person. And God says, listen, after the trials come, the triumph is going to come. The blessing is going to come. If you stand in the battle, the reward is going to be yours. Praise the name of Jesus. If you stand with me, I'm going to stand with you. Give me praise about it. Thank you, Jesus. But listen, the Bible tells us in verses 2, then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, my this thing be. Here was a man, and here was his response to the word that God gave that day to Elisha. This is how he responded. I hope you're not like that man. <laughs> when God gave a word to somebody, you have a choice. You're going to believe it or you're going to reject it. The choice is yours. 
But folks, when you accept that word, you are going to be blessed. Praise the name of the Lord. When we accept that word, you are going to prosper. But then you reject that word, and as you will see, somebody, what is going to be your position? And so the Bible tells us that Elisha said to him, as he responded in this way, he said, listen, let me tell you something. You, because, because of your unbelief, yes, behold, in verses 2, behold, thou shalt see it with thy eyes, but shall not eat of it. Wow. You're going to see it, but you're not going to partake of it. You're going to see it, but folks are not going to enjoy it at all. Because why? It is because of your unbelief, folks. Sir. Let me tell you something. Unbelief will rob you of the blessings of the Lord. Yes, sir. Unbelief will cause you to miss God's blessings. Hello, somebody. Unbelief is going to cause you, folks, to forego what God has intended to give you. Just because you would not believe him. Folks, and that is a very serious thing. And so this man, this messenger here, he will find out the hard way about when you reject the word of the living God. But before we go there, the Bible tells us that there were four lepers. Four lepers in, in, in verses 3. Four leprous men on the entering of the gate and they said one to another, why sit we here till we die? Because death is outside here, surety. And uh, death uh, is inside. So they decided, listen, why sit we here? Why sit we here and wait? For death to come upon us and destruction to come upon us, son. Listen, let us do something. Let us get up. Why sit we here till we die? Let us make a move, praise God. Hallelujah. Let us do something, praise the name of Jesus, son. And so they said to themselves, listen, we are going to go to the camp of the Syrians. And if they save us alive, then hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. But if they kill us, then we're dead already. So we have lost nothing at all. <laughs> hallelujah. So we're going to go. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, folks, I want to tell you something. Praise God. They were exercising a certain measure, amen, of faith. Praise God. And that's what God is asking us to do. Folks, why sit in your despair this morning? Why sit wallowing in self-pity about your circumstances, about your situation? It is not going to make it better. Why don't you take a leap of faith and trust in the Lord this morning? Praise God. Hallelujah. Why don't you take a leap of faith and say, listen, I am going to put my faith and trust in the living God. I'm going to put my hands in the hands of the living God. Hallelujah. I am going to trust in the Lord this morning. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible tells us uh, that as uh, they put uh, some faith in devotion, amen, God, amen, was moving with them. Praise God. Hallelujah. All of Samaria could have done something, but they were sitting there ready to die, folks. Uh, the king could have done something, but they have given up hope and they were sitting there waiting to die. Still eating donkey's head. Come on, somebody. Still living like cannibals, eating one another. Glory to God. But there were four men, unlikely men, that God could use and that God would use. I want to tell you sometimes God has to pass those big folks that they know too much. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me, somebody? There are some people, folks, I tell you that they think they know too much. Uh, hello, they know everything, uh, folks, and yet they know nothing at all. Uh, my 
My Bible tells me that God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confirm the things that are wise. Glory to God. Whom did God choose, brothers and sisters, to bring about a miracle to our nation? He chose four leprous men. Men who are outcast. Men who are good for nothing. That's what the public was saying. That was the opinion of man. They are good for nothing. Look at these lepers. We should shun them. We should keep away from them. They are good for nothing. But God said, I will show you my power. The God of the impossible will show you. Amen. By might. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God, brothers and sisters, I'm done it again and again and again and again. You see it in the Bible that God used the foolish things, the small things, the insignificant things, amen, to bring about to the greatest power and demonstration of the power. He used a rod, a simple piece of stick, folks, hallelujah, to show each other, to demonstrate his mighty power, praise God. Same rock part in the Red Sea. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That same rock part in it. The Bible tells us uh, when Israel was murmuring uh, and they were complaining about uh, Moses uh, and about Aaron. How it is uh, that, uh, God, that they are taking authority over the congregation. Like only God and him. Uh, speaks to them alone and, and nobody else. We are nobody. And so they were still up a division within the ranks uh, of Israel. They were going about uh, behind Moses' back uh, and they were speaking about this man of God uh, and they were speaking about uh, Aaron. Uh, folks, uh, how is it that he has been chosen to be here, the high priest? Uh, how it is? Uh, and so they were complaining. God says, I will put an end to this nonsense. I will put an end to this rivalry. I will put an end to this jealousy. I will put an end to the spirit of division. Now it is moving in among the ranks of God's people. Tearing the people apart. I'm going to put an end of it. And I am going to settle it in a miraculous way. Everybody, you make sure that you got to hear your piece of stick. Go and cut a piece of stick. Or I get a man representing each of the tribes of Israel. Select your leader. Select your number one choice. And so you go ahead and you get a piece of stick and, uh, and cut it. And so here is Aaron a one as well. And so we're going to lay it up in the tabernacle. And it was laid up for a little while. And God said to Moses, you go now. And you bring out uh, those pieces a sticker. Each one with its distinguished mark. So everyone knew which belonged to each other. Lo and behold, the Bible tells us, folks, that when they brought on those rods, uh, all the other rods was just as they brought on, in fact, more dry than anything else. But to see Aaron's rod, it was different. Not only folks, uh, it looked still as it was, uh, but the Bible tells us there were branches. <laughs> branches coming over that rod. Not only branches, there were fruit. <laughs> there were fruit uh, coming out of that rod. Praise God. Hallelujah. I tell you, not a man was able to squawk after that. Uh, every mouth was zipped. Amen. Hallelujah, because it was a demonstration of the power of God. How God can use simple things, folks. Amen. And you are here today. Don't let anybody look down upon you. Amen. What God can do through your life. What God can do through you right now. Praise God. You say, Pastor, I am too broken that God can use me, Pastor. Pastor, my life is filled with so much of blotches. How could God use me? Pastor, my life has so much of brokenness. How could God ever use me? Pastor, my life has so much of pain. How could God use me? Pastor, I have been beaten. I have been broken down. I have come low right down to the ground. How can God use me, Pastor? Pastor, I am messed up. I mean, I am really messed up. How could God use me? Pastor, I'm a backslider. I'm back 
sin so bad. How could God ever use me? I don't think that God could ever use me again. I have made a mess of my life. I made a mess of my situation, Pastor. How could God ever use me? How could God ever do anything in my life? Pastor, I struggle. I struggle. Sometimes I even go read my Bible. How could God use me? Pastor, honestly, sometimes I even know what to pray. Church, are you listening to me somebody? Hallelujah. Oh, Pastor, I am in a mess. How could God ever use me? But folks, don't underestimate the power of God. Hallelujah. When you come to that place of repentance and you break it right with God, folks, you will experience the transforming power of God. And you can see what God can do through one broken vessel. In fact, God wants us to be broken. For those folks that are painting a picture that they are all well and good. For those who are painting a picture that they are, they are spotless. Hello, somebody. For those who are painting a picture that they are high, high and dry. And they have everybody in the congregation. Yes, that I am number one in the congregation. Uh, folks, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, God can use people like that. Uh, God can use people who fill with themselves uh, and fill with pride. Uh, God can only use a broken vessel. God can only use a humble vessel. Praise God. Uh, we got to come broken, folks. Come on, somebody. We got to come humble. Praise God. Uh, we got to come at the foot of the cross. Uh, glory to God. Uh, and when you come Folks, in that way, hallelujah, you're going to experience the healing of God. If the Lord to God full, you're going to go home empty, somebody. You're going to return empty. But when you come to God and you come to God empty, you're going to go back full, praise God. Hallelujah. Because God can't full one already full, somebody. You can't full one already full. If you have a bucket and it's full, it can't take nothing more. If you have a barrel and it's full, it can't take nothing more. If you have a weaver and it's full, it can't take nothing more. But when you have a vessel, folks, that is empty, it can be full. Praise the Lord. That's what God wants us to come. He wants us to come empty. He wants us to come broken. Come with your brokenness. Come with your emptiness. Come with your hurt. Come with your pain. Come with your misery. Come with your frustration. Praise God. Come with your infirmity. Come with your sickness. Come with your disease. And says God, yeah, I am the Lord. I need your help. I need your healing. Praise God. I need your mending. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, hear my to see what God is going to do, praise God. How God will take a vessel like you and use you for his own glory. Why does God take vessels, folks that are lowly and humbly, folks, and use them mightily? Amen. That no flesh should get the glory, or glory belongs unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You think, folks, that I can ever glory in anything of mine? Folks, I have come from a very simple background. I have come from a very humble family. Struggling, a struggling family in Las Lomas. Lease in Las Lomas. Uh, my father was a very humble man. A very humble job. Uh, my father never had a government job, folks. Uh, my father was also a proprietor. Selling vegetables and so on. I live a very humble living. Struggling folks from one day to the next, uh, one week to the next, trying to provide for his family, struggling to send us to school. Uh, folks, hello, somebody. It was a struggle, struggle. That's the background I ashamed of it, and I will tell you about it. Uh, that's where I come from, folks. Uh, I grew up with a latrine. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Yes, I grew up that way. Hello, somebody. 
I grew up folks having very, very, very little, but never knew folks uh, that we had little. We always thought that we had uh, sufficient praise God. Uh, I grew up folks after drinking condensed milk. Uh, after drinking condensed milk in the tin, folks, uh, you wash that and you have added now another dish. Amen. Glory to God on that matcha, that kitchen matcha. For those of you, amen, who know about what I am talking about. Uh, where you wash your hands through a window with a little galvanized thing there. Hallelujah. Praise God. Where you go into the chula and you take some ashes, of folks, uh, and you mix it with some tile and some blue soap. Uh, hallelujah. You get some coconut husk. Uh, hello, somebody. Hallelujah. Take out some five of them instead of that. Uh, glory to God and your match in your pot. Uh, praise God. You're washing your enamel cup, cup uh, and enamel plate. Enamel flying out when you drop it in the ground. So dead like that. Glory to God. Uh, that is who, how I grew up. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, and I'm still all uh, that why God will choose uh, such a, a person like me. A family like my folks. Uh, praise God. So that I can simply be a messenger. Bearing the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, to our community, to our village, uh, and to the villages around, uh, and to this nation, uh, folks, and uh, even to the nations uh, of the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. I stand in no boast. I stand as a privileged person. I will tell you that. Praise God. Like the lepers, glory to God. Uh, Hallelujah. I initiated, praise the Lord. I took a step of faith. I took a leap of faith that day on the 28th of May, 1975. I said, I'm going to walk down that aisle. Yes, the family's still in religion. They're still in lostness. But as a little boy, I said, listen, I'm going to take a step of faith. I don't know what my parents are going to say about it, uh, that I'm going to go to church. Uh, I don't know what folks are about it, but I know that I need to do this. Uh, I need to come down on the altar. I need to trust in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins uh, because I couldn't find it where I was. Uh, there was nothing like the forgiveness of sins where I was. Uh, I had to work and work and work and work for salvation. But Jesus came and says, uh, no, no, no amount of work uh, is going to help you. No amount of work is going to provide salvation. Folks, because a uh, man uh, trying to save himself uh, is totally impossible. Amen. You have to trust me for salvation. You have to trust me for a ticket to heaven. Amen. And I said, here is my hand, Lord. I'm trusting you for a ticket for heaven. I'm trusting you for a ticket for salvation. Praise God. And I walked down that aisle, glory to God, and I trusted in Jesus. Little did I realize that that little boy, 10 years of age, praise God, would set in a motion, amen, a movement that will change my family tree, praise God. Little did I realize that a little boy of 10 years old, trusting in Christ, uh, will bring about change, not only my family tree, but bring about change in this community, praise God. Little did I realize that this little boy, hallelujah, trusted in the Lord, uh, that God will call him, uh, amen, to be a humble servant, uh, amen, and to shepherd uh, his flock uh, in Las Lomas, praise the name of Jesus. Uh, little did I realize that this little boy, amen, that trusted in the Lord, that God will use him, amen, to go to the nations of the world and to share the love of Jesus Christ. Praise God. So what am I to be proud about? What am I to be boastful about, folks? What am I to complain about? I'm just to say thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Like those leprous men. God will choose because everybody decided that they will sit and do nothing. But four leprous men said, Listen, we will not trust ourselves into the hands of the Lord. Whatever the Lord see fit, if the sea can still us, fine, we don't get it ready. But we're gonna trust in the Lord. Amen. Place our life in the hands of God and let God decide Hallelujah. our fate. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let God decide. The outcome. Folks, let me tell you something. God Christ has asked you to do this morning. Place your situation. Place your circumstances in the hands of the Lord. And just trust Him for it. Praise God. Amen. 
you don't have to be frustrated over it. That is what trust is. You see, trust is, folks, uh, is that confidence. That's what trust is. It's that confidence uh, that if I give it and I put it in the hands of Jesus, praise God, if I put it in the hands of the Lord, if I put it in the hands of the God of the impossible, that God is going to take care of it for me, praise God. I don't have to worry about it anymore. I don't have to spend sleepless nights about it anymore. If I put it into the hands of the Lord, then God is going to take care of it. If I put myself in the hands of the Lord, God will take care of me, praise God. I don't have to worry after that. I don't have to fret after that. I am just going to do what God has to say, praise God. What God is saying in this word, I'm standing on that word. I'm trusting in that word, praise God. And I'm going to leave it there in the hands of the Lord. Let God handle it. Let God do the work, praise God. Hallelujah. I am not going to be frustrated over this situation anymore. I'm leaving it into the hands of the Lord. Let God do what is best, praise God. That's what God is saying to us this morning. Hallelujah. Keep at your work. Keep at your worship. And you see your problems? Hallelujah. You see your distresses? Leave it in the hands of the Lord. You see your burdens? Leave it in the hands of the Lord. The Bible says in Psalm 55, 22, Cast your burden upon the Lord, and He will sustain you. And He will never suffer the righteous to be moved. Don't carry your burdens anymore. Leave it in the hands of the Lord. Take a leap of faith. Trust in the Lord. Hallelujah says, God, this is too much for me. This burden is too much for me. This crisis is too much for me. This sickness is killing me. It's too much for me, dear Lord. This problem is too much for me. Lord, I'm leaving it into your hands. I'm not going to worry about it. You take care of it, Lord. Hallelujah. And folks, you will see what God is going to do. God can do nothing until you place it into his hands. Come on, somebody. As much as God want to help you. Unless you don't take what you have and put it in the hands of the Lord. How could God help somebody? God not going to take it from your hands. Some of you think that God's going to take it from your hands. Some of you think that God's going to grab it from your hands and say, Give me that problem. Give me that trouble. Give me that sickness. No, 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 folks. You got to offer it to him. And says, God, here it is. I'll give it to you. It's too much for me. I'm giving it to you. Here is my burden. Here is my trouble, dear Lord. Hallelujah. Here is my wife, dear Lord. Here is my husband. Here is my children, dear Lord. Here is my job. Here is my finances, dear Lord. Here it is. Take all that back. Look and show the Lord. Lord, look at it. All it have there is sense, dear Lord. That's it. Dear Lord. Take all the flour and show the Lord. Lord, look at all it is. The barrel almost to the bottom, dear Lord. Here it is, Lord. Lord, I give it to you. I give it to you, dear Lord. Handle this, Lord. I don't know what to do, dear Lord. Hallelujah. I'm not going to frustrate myself. I'm not going to worry myself about it. Praise God. I give it to you. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Take that leap of faith. Take that step of faith. And you will see what God's going to do. Unless you don't give it, God ain't going to handle somebody. Give it to the Lord. Amen. Give it to the Lord, hallelujah. Give it to the Lord, thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord, hallelujah. As we bow for prayer this morning, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. You say, Pastor, I'm ready to give it to the Lord. Praise God. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to do exactly that. Come at this altar. And lay at the altar. Amen. That's what I'm going to ask you. Lay at the altar. Lord, here is my sickness. Here is my disease. Here is my financial worries. Dear Lord, here is my stresses. Here is my anxiety. Here is my brokenness. Here is my bruises. Here is my struggles. Dear Lord, here is it, Lord. I'm bringing it to you, dear Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, you take care of that for me. You take care of that for me. Father, as people would be bringing now their problems, their burdens, their worries, and their cares, are bringing themselves, dear Father. Praise Lord. May you honor the faith of each individual that comes. 
under the faith of each individual that comes and let them experience the God of the impossible. Praise God. Let them experience the dunamis power of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Would you all stand and for all those who are coming right now, just bringing your burdens, you come up in faith this morning. And I'll meet with you, praise the Lord, and I'll launch you with that oil, and pray with you today, glory to God, and trust that into the hands of the Lord right now. Ministers of music, would you come, praise God.